welcome to this episode of Living on the Edge with your host, Russ and Maeve Moyer. Hi there, I'm Russ Moyer, the president of Eagle Worldwide Ministries and your host on Living on the Edge. I'm here tonight with Maeve and we're going to be hosting Living on the Edge on a regular basis. And tonight we just wanted to start off sharing a little bit about our heart of, of where we want to go and what we're trying to do with this new series, Living on the Edge. Maybe why don't you just open up and share your heart a little. Well, one of the things I think about living on the edge is, and I've said this to you before, that if you're not living on the edge in the kingdom, you're taking up too much space. And I think that we need to live on the cutting edge of revelation. We need to be people who are seeking God and following God's purpose and plan. And how are we going to find that out if we can't hear from God? So I believe that living on the edge will be a prophetic show that will help people to understand how to hear God's voice and then how to move practically forward from that place. You know, really one of the things that I'd like to see us do is to highlight different people, ministries, businesses, uh, Christian business leaders who are actually out there trying to make a difference, impacting lives right in the marketplace. Both of us have had many years in the marketplace. I was 21 years in business and you were more than 20 years in the marketplace setting. And both of us were in that place where the rubber really meets the road. Not uh, not cooped up inside the four walls of a building, but the church really being the church. And you know, the church is not a denomination, it's not a fellowship. It's actually the in the hearts and the lives of believers. The kingdom of God today needs to be made manifest in the community. You know, we're, we're looking really for transformation, to, to transform, to impact our society in, in the areas of education and government. And we want to highlight the action people that are really doing something today. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things we always say is you don't want to be a Christian going to work. You want to be a minister in your marketplace call. And we know from studying the Word of God and being active in the Word of God, being doers of the Word, that our work is part of our worship. And as we start to look at it in that way, we can take God's message to work and be palatable with it. It's okay to be palatable. You know, Christian media today is changing. And uh, all of media is changing. All of communication field is changing. And I believe that Christian television has to change as well. Absolutely. We have to compete in the secular marketplace with other people who are doing some very creative and exciting things, not just technically, but uh, uh, something that's going to keep people's attention for a length of time and not just sitting around always talking, but, you know, breaking to action situations of what's really going on. And uh, like when we go to the mission field, whether we're going to Africa or Guatemala or Trinidad or wherever it is we're headed, I'd like to bring our our, our viewers right with us, you know, right into the mission field. That's because it's such an exciting place for me. It is exciting and uh, like having roving reporters on what God is doing in all of these places. And you know, that would be incredible to have downtown Hamilton, roving reporters. We just talked about that when we had our meeting and we, we may even be able to do that at some time, having a good news wagon and go from place to place with a roving reporter and actually talk to people who have heard from God, have been healed by God, who have been visited by God, and how their lives have changed. You, know, you hear so much in the news today, so much negativity in the news today. Half the time you're afraid to turn the news on, you know, with all the things that are happening around the world and the shaking, the quaking, and the problems and situations internationally. But there's a lot of really good things that are happening, a lot of really wonderful people that are actually out there impacting lives and making a difference one life at a time. Like down at the Kingsway, they feed like 200 people a day and have programs where they connect with and work with people that that are in the draws of uh, life-altering addictions. And, and to see them come out and to see the positive impact that the Gospel Alive actually makes on them. It's exciting, and that's what we want to do, is to try to bring our viewers to that place where they can see God really in action. Right. And there's no better way to do that than to go out to the people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the church has become too self-focused and self-centered in its programs and, and the way that we bring the message. We need to take the message out. And if 
there's one strength that I believe we have at Eagle Worldwide Ministries. It's getting outside of the four walls of the church and bringing the kingdom of light to bear in the midst of the kingdom of darkness. One thing the church forgets is the devil still has a lease on the earth, but we have the power and authority over him. So if we go out and we bring the word, then we bring that infiltration of light. And Living on the Edge is not only going to be on uh, Christian television programs, but it's also going to be aired on community channels and in secular marketplaces because we want something that people are going to see, that are going to realize that God is real and that church is for real and that church can be fun. That you don't have to go there with a long face and a, a drawn out life, that, that there's actually exciting things that happen when God's people gather together that they can see live worship and people just enjoying themselves in the presence and the power of God. Yes, I've been in many services that are absolutely entertaining almost. And then to hear the word of God brought forward with power, with anointing, it cuts through your heart and it brings change and it brings conviction. So if it's great if we can get the people into the church, but when you can't, you have to be willing to take it out. And I think that this is one of the ways through this program that we can reach out and bring that word of God, bring the excitement of serving God, and bring it in a new and a fresh way that will impact people who aren't necessarily serving God. You know, since I came to Canada 13 years ago, almost 14 years ago now, uh, we've been able in, uh, to birth uh, nine, ten churches here in the southern Ontario and traveled to more than 180 churches across the country. Fellowships, churches, large groups, large organizations. And to see what God is doing across this nation is absolutely amazing. And we want to highlight some of the wonderful things that are happening even in our own churches like the Gathering Place of Avora which is a real marketplace, ministry-focused yes. church with John and Victoria Irving and uh, where they purchased a bowling alley and uh, they turned the uh, lounge into a sanctuary. And now it's alive with young people and uh, alive with the presence of God and the love of God. You can feel God in the house and uh, they're actually having a legitimate impact on their community. You know, Absolutely, uh, reclaiming what the devil stole, they got it back. And they are having a uh, profound effect because they are involved with government officials. They have the big uh, brothers breakfast there. They had the mayor's bowling banquet there. I mean, they do a lot of things for their community and they've had lots of recognition from the secular world. And when people start to look at Christians as active and contributing members to the community, then we can get their attention. It seems that each one of our churches and ministries has its own personality and, and also uh, in addition to having the, the mission that we have at Eagle Worldwide, they also seem to have that, their own personality and that local focus that, that's ever so nice and we want to bring a little bit of that to bear and let people see what's really happening and how lives are legitimately being changed. So I, I think we're going to have an exciting time and we're going to bring you some places and do some things together and we want you to see God in action and, and see God in, in action in people's lives and in normal everyday people doing extraordinary things under the power and the presence of God. And you know we're going to be back in, in just a minute. We're going to to, to have some, maybe it's going to minister a little bit to you in music and we're going to have a tremendous life-changing testimony of, uh, by a young lady who has been tremendously impacted by the presence and the power of God. You stay tuned. We're going to be right back with a little more living on the edge. That's where we want you to be, living right on the edge. Silent cries 
The name of Jesus used to mean nothing to me, except sometimes if I was maybe swearing or telling a joke. And for some reason, even though I didn't realize it in so many of my friends, we all use that name so carelessly and so freely because it was so effective. And what we didn't understand was that the effectiveness was because there was so much power in that name. I know that now, but I didn't know it then. And I came to learn that that power 
could be used for good. I used to laugh and mock at Christians. I used to think I was fine without Jesus. I learned about him in school. I heard about him in church when I was growing up. But he really was just a story, just like anything else, just like history or a movie that you'd watch on TV. But it really wasn't real. I believed he was a, an historical figure. But the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus was the, was the word and the power that would end up saving me from a life that I thought was okay until I woke up one day and realized that I was not okay. You know, I, I, um, I think I was a people pleaser, and uh, I learned really at an early age that um, how to find out what would make someone happy and make someone like me, and I would do that thing, or I would say that thing, or I would be that person, or I would be that way. And I didn't realize that as the years went by, I was losing... I guess sight of who I really was because I became this fabricated person that was a I guess an amalgamation of all the things that other people wanted wanted to see and wanted to hear and uh, they were happy and that made me happy but that's not the kind of happy that makes a lasting joy or makes you have a reason to keep on going because you feel trapped you feel like you're at the mercy and the control and the power of other people my happiness is going to depend on how happy I can make you. I don't know if there's anyone out there who's, who's in that same boat right now, but it really isn't a great place to be in. You're that person that everyone likes, the person that has so many friends, the person that makes people laugh, and, you know, when you come in the room, people just can't wait to see what you're going to say or do to brighten their day, and yet you're the one who is getting um, sinking lower and lower into a darker and darker place and so music was the one thing that I knew made me happy and I spent my life um, pursuing music I, I ended up doing it full-time and uh, I ended up traveling all over the world and being on some amazing television shows and winning awards and playing with really famous people and the more uh, successful I got, the unhappier I got. And I couldn't figure out why. And yet everyone thought I was living the dream. And so I began to wonder, wow, if this isn't going to make it for me, and I'm getting pretty sick and tired of, I guess, putting out that energy every day, trying to figure out what's going to make you happy, that um, all of a sudden... The desire began to rise up in me. Well, what's going to make Helena happy? What's going to make her want to get up tomorrow morning and get through the day? I was uh, having trouble finding something. And I started to play for some Christian singers and uh, was exposed to a new kind of church, different from what I grew up in. And these people seemed to be more free, and they talked about Jesus as if he was still alive, as if he was in the room. At first, I had a, you know, trouble, I guess, accepting that, and I thought maybe this was some sort of a cult or a brainwashing, honestly, because he was a historical figure for me. And, you know, I, I, I thought that as long as you're a good person, if there really is a heaven and a hell, um, that's all that really mattered. But the more I got exposed to this Jesus that people were talking about, they were using this name in a totally different way than what I was used to. They revered and respected that name, and they would never joke about him. And they didn't say it loosely or flippantly or casually. And then I started to notice these people were happy. And you know what? They weren't looking to me to make them happy. They weren't looking to me to be the source of their peace, their joy. And I thought, man, I want that. That's the answer. That's it. And I think the answer is in this Jesus person. And if he's really real, then he's got to be real for me too. If he really is who he said he was and who they say he is, then he's not a respecter of persons. He doesn't have a special private club. And so... 
I just realized one day I, I want to have this relationship with this person. You know what? He really is real. He showed himself real to me. And my whole life changed that day. And it can for you too. And all you have to do is say, Jesus, if you're real, will you be real to me in my life? Ask him today and he'll change your life too. Wow, what a great testimony. There's Helena telling you what it was like for her to be impacted by a supernatural Jesus in her everyday natural life. That's what we're talking about, God meeting you face to face in all of your problems, all of your troubles, and turning things around. You know, one thing I've learned about walking with God is walking with God. You still have to walk through some things, but it sure is nice to know that God is walking with you. And was that song uh, that you sang people need the so Lord. <laughs> appropriate? Because you know what? People really do need they the Lord. They do. People need the Lord. You need the Lord. I need the Lord. We need help walking through this thing, and we need to walk through it together. Yeah. You know, none of us are an island. None of us are meant to be. Uh, you know, separated from the rest of community. But having one another and being there for one another, to me, that's really part of what church is all about, is that when you're in that time of need, that there are people that care about you, that people who speak into your life in a positive way to help keep you on track and to keep you in that right fold, keep you in a place where you're protected and uh, a little nesting place and a resting place. You know, there's so much talk today about church and church is certainly changing and we want to see it change. We want to see it to actually have an impact on society today, actually be contemporary and relevant to our society today. But at the same time, we don't want to lose our spiritual relevance either. Absolutely. We don't want to lose that salt that makes us special and makes us different. We don't want to give up the power and the presence of God as we move into the contemporary circles to be impactful to that next generation for sure. Well, of course we don't want to lose that if we do then we can't impact them with the truth of who God really is. We'll make him a God that's worth serving or he's permissible, he's easy to serve. He's God. He's not the guy that lives next door. You know, sometimes, you know, we're so creative that we create in our own minds what God really is, that we're the God that we want, the God that we need, rather than get that foundational truth set in a solid place in our hearts and in our lives. You know, there's so many people that we want to reach. We want to reach this next generation, but we also want to reach the forgetful hearers. Absolutely. The people that are in my age range and, and even in yours, and you're a little Watching younger than that. I am. But, you know, when, when they were growing up, they had all the foundational things and they heard all the wonderful stories but somewhere along the line life hit him with some challenges some things uh, some distractions and diversions and disappointments and one thing led to another but you know what God is rounding him back up and drawing him back in because I believe we're moving into a very strategic and a very special time a prophetic season for the body of Christ, uh, a, a very key moment in the history of time when everything that can be shaken will be shaken. We're moving into those end days that every prophet really prophesied about. You can see end time prophecy being fulfilled before our eyes every day on the news, every day on television and the newspaper. You pick up the newspaper and you see end time prophecy being fulfilled. These are important times. Exciting times. Exciting times. Very exciting times. When people need to learn how to live and how to lead, how to walk in the spirit and live and, and lead on the edge because things are changing, things are happening. Everything happens at such a rapid pace today. Technology being what it is, it is shaking everything up as well. Uh, I mean, things happen to you and our time span, that, that our attention span that we have isn't there the way it was when we were children. Things happen rapid fire. Things are changing in our society. And you know what, we need to change with it. We do have to, yes. Sometimes I find it, you know, at my age, it can be a little bit difficult you know, to really embrace change. Yeah. But you know, if I'm going to be all that I can be, then I know I have to be willing to open myself up to change and, and, and to be willing to move into that contemporary circle that actually challenges me. You know, not to stay in my own little comfort zone of what I like and what I'm doing. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing Living on the Edge. You know, I did television for four and a half years, maybe even secular and Christian TV. Mm -hmm. But this is a time when I really want to step up and do a little something again that we can reach some people and touch and change some lives. Yes, absolutely. 
Well, I want to thank you uh, for joining us here tonight, and hopefully you're going to join us on a regular basis on Living on the Edge. We're excited about having you join us, and sometimes it'll be me, or sometimes it'll be me. Sometimes we'll be here in the kitchen, or sometimes we'll be in the living room, or in our office. We just want to be with you, and we want to invite you a little bit into our lives. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. We want to thank you for joining us today on Living on the Edge, and we want to challenge you. It's time to move out, to move out to the edge, to the very edge of yourself. Take yourself right to the very edge and take one more step. Thank you for joining us tonight on Living on the Edge. You have a great day now. God bless you. Did you know that living as a Christian today is so exciting? Exciting? I thought being a Christian was boring. Not boring at all. In fact, I'm living on the edge. The edge? Yes. The prophetic edge. The prophetic edge? Yes. What does that mean? That means that the apostolic breaker anointing lets me take things to the limit, living, ruling, reigning in the fullness of the Spirit. Where did you learn all of that? Well, I learned that in Dr. Russ's book called Living on the Prophetic Edge. Living on the Prophetic Edge? Yeah. It teaches me how to know the power and the authority that's been given to me as a Christian and helps me to take it to the limit for the kingdom of God. Now I know how to extend and advance the kingdom by learning how to hear his voice and make declarations for him. Wow, Christianity isn't boring after all. Right. I need to get that book. Let's go live on the edge. Let's get that book. The Prophetic Edge. Thank you for watching this episode of Living on the Edge. Eagle Worldwide Ministries offers a variety of resources to strengthen the body of Christ. For more information, check our website at www.eagleworldwide.com or call us at 905-308-9991. God bless.